Praise the Lord, everyone, here Sunday afternoon slash evening. Actually, getting a little later start today. Um, had a little vehicle trouble today, so it um, threw me off my schedule a little bit. So but anyway, we're here gathered now here on Sunday evening, afternoon, evening, to go and look in the Word of God. And the Lord really is uh, he's good to us. Amen. He is, always shows how much he cares. He told us in the word, he'll supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. I can honestly say, he has always supplied my needs. I have never been in need. He may not always get what I want, but I always have what I need. God makes sure that he, he fulfills his word there. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit this, this evening, about something we talked about uh, before, in one of the other ministry messages, about where Jesus, when the devil came to him in the wilderness to tempt him so he could overcome sin and do what he had to do in Matthew chapter 4. And every time we saw that the devil came and tempted Jesus, Jesus told the devil, it is written. Okay, it's in the word, it's written. So every time the devil came to him with something, Jesus didn't. Even, even though he was God manifest in the flesh, he didn't lean to his own understanding. He simply said, it is written. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in prayer right now. God, ask you bless this word, Lord God. Bless our understanding, Lord. And I pray it's an encouragement to someone, Lord God. And they'll see and understand that through your word and through obedience to your word, Lord God, that we can live a victorious life and be saved. Lord, I just thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Excuse me, a little sneeze there. In Matthew chapter 4, every time Satan came to Jesus to tempt him with something, he said it is written, okay? He told him. Then in Matthew 4 and 3, when the, the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be turned to bread. He had just been fasting for 40 days, Jesus did. 40 days and 40 nights without any food. Hungry, you know he was hungry, he was a man, he was in the flesh. Okay, he was hungry, and the Satan came to him, good son of God, turn these stones into bread so you can eat. And what did Jesus say? He said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How about that? He took him into the holy city, took him up high into the holy city, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thy, thyself down. For it is written, and the devil quoted scripture too, for it is written. But see, the devil's good about twisting scripture, okay? He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands shall bear thee up. And what he told, what did Jesus say to him in that case? He told him again, right? It is written. He said, it's written again. If thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, okay? And the devil did again, showed him all the kingdoms, and he told him it's written. It is written, it is written. Every time the devil tempted Jesus, he told him, it's written. Okay? So we see all through those scriptures that, in Matthew there, that these scriptures, every time Satan came to, excuse me, my little, I don't know if it's not a head cold or what, starting to try to get up here, but I rebuke it, whatever it is in Jesus' name, that um, he said it's written. And what I feel like the Lord laid on my heart and told me to tell you for myself and for your, anybody who hears, we have the same power. We have the same ability. When the devil comes against us in our lives, whether he comes against us to tempt us in our minds, we can tell him just like the Lord did. It's written. All we have to do is say it is written. But you have to know what's written to be able to tell the devil what's written. Okay. We'll look at some scriptures here. Let's see what we can tell the devil, okay? Let's see what we can say to the devil and what the Lord gives us written in his word to comfort us and strengthen us. We'll look at the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, okay? And it says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God, it's written in his word right there. If God's for you, if you're serving God and he's for you and you're for him, who can be against you? Who can come against you? Who can do anything against you, okay? 
If God's for you, who can be against you? But what's the flip side of that? If God's not for you, you're in trouble. Amen. We understand and see that it is written that if God be for us, who can be against us? And that's a wonderful promise. Amen. Shows us right there that if we're doing and trying to live for God and serve God, doing the best we can, God is there for us. Excuse me. He'll take care of our needs. He'll meet it. He'll protect us. Okay. Let's go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures of all time. Bear with me here. Oh, my sinus is bothering me. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So right there shows us he gave us his word. It's written that we can do anything. Nothing can, can, is impossible to us through Christ who gives us our strength. If we allow the Lord to give us our strength, if he is our source of strength, if he is who we look to, then we can do all things. So nothing's impossible. How about that for uh, an encouraging promise from God? Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? If I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. How about that? Through Christ now, not through myself, not through this world, not through anything else, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Okay? An exceeding precious promise. We see it's written. I can do all things through Christ, who gives me my strength. My strength comes from the Lord, okay? My joy, the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How about that? Okay? These are the things, the Word of God, if we'll look at it, all these wonderful nuggets, these precious nuggets that He's given us, if we'll just read and realize what it's telling us here, okay? It's telling us we can do anything, amen? We're able to, through God, do and, and conquer and take over and make things what they need to be. The devil does not have to have victory over us if we realize what the word tells us and we live it and we believe it. Amen. Okay. Let's look at um, James chapter 4 and verse 7. This is a very important scripture. It is written. Okay. He says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How about that? But you can't just resist the devil. He's not going anywhere. Then you must submit yourself to God. You must submit to God, to God's rules to his teachings, to his what he commands you to do. And when you've done that and submitted to God and been obedient, then you resist the devil. You say, no, devil, I'm not having any part with you. It is written, devil. All I got to do is submit to my God and resist you, and you got to go. And that's what it says right there. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing the word of God tells us. Amen. What power. And I'm telling you it works because it, I've applied it in my life. I apply it every day now, okay? And it works. I'm not a punching bag for the devil anymore. My mind is not a place he can just come in, throw a thought, and mess me up anytime he wants to. Amen? How about that? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God is for me, who can be against me? These things give me encouragement every day when it seems like things are bad. And they will seem like they're bad sometimes. You're like, I don't know about this. But if you remember the scriptures, if you quote these things out loud and tell the devil, it is written, devil. He's got to leave you alone. You'll see. You'll come out the other side and you won't have any problems. Look at back in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you an example. Daniel. If you go back and read about Daniel, Daniel would refuse not to pray to his God. He prayed to his God. And some people that were very jealous of Daniel tried to set him up with King Nebuchadnezzar in that the fact that he told him that uh, they made a day where nobody can pray to anybody else. And they were setting Daniel up, okay? And Daniel prayed anyway, okay? Daniel prayed to his God. So they took him and threw him into the lion's den, okay? I think it was Darius, not Nebuchadnezzar. Anyway, you know the story. The story, and the true story is, they threw Daniel in the lion's den. The king was tricked, and the king was very mad at those people who tricked him. Because he loved Daniel. But he, when, when, once something's written in the law of the Medes and the Persians, it had to be done. That was how it had to be. So they tricked him so they could get Daniel killed. And Daniel stood on the word of God. He prayed and talked to his God. Amen. 
And we see he was cast in the lion's den. And when the king came to the to the uh, to the uh, lion's den the next day, Daniel, are you alive? Live forever, O king, the Daniel told him. The Lord had closed the mouths of those lions because of the faithfulness and the obedience of Daniel. How many more mouths of spiritual lions will God close for you? Those mouths that come against you and speak against you. If be that you serve in God. If you're not serving God, <clears throat> you put yourself outside God's protection, his realm. Not that God doesn't want to, but you walk away from it. Okay? You have to submit yourself. Flee to God, resist the devil for him to flee from you. Amen? Same thing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Friends of Daniel. They refused to bow down to an image, uh, a statue. And they were set up the same way, set up the same way. And that was King Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, all right, y'all won't, y'all won't bow down. I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. He said, pump that thing up seven times hotter than normal. And the Bible tells us clearly, if you go back and read, it was so hot that when the guards opened the door to throw the three Hebrew boys in, the fire was so hot, it killed the guards. And yet the boys went in the fire. And when Nebuchadnezzar looked down from the balcony into the fire, he saw them walking around. They were not harmed, the Bible says. You know what else the scripture says? When they came out of that fire, they did not even smell like smoke. I'm here to tell you, that's how good God is to his people. If we'll serve him and obey him, you come through the fire and honey, you won't even smell like smoke. How about that? There won't even be the smell of smoke or this world or the garbage of it on you. You will come through and not even smell like it. That is a blessing. Amen. If you think about that, that is really something right there. They were cast in a furnace, pumped up seven times hotter, and it survived, okay? Because God was with them. And if God's with us, we just read, if God be for us, who can be against us? Okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If the Spirit of God lives in you, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. How about that? So when you have God in your life, when you've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with his spirit, he's in you. He lives there. And greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. Who is in the world? The devil. Even Jesus called the devil the God of this world. Amen. But greater is he if you have the Lord living in you that's in you than he that's in the world. All these exceeding precious promises in the word of God. Wonderful, wonderful things. It is written. All we got to do is tell the devil the same thing. And remember, and read, it's written. I don't have to bow down. I don't have to get beat up by the devil. I don't have to live beneath where I'm supposed to be in God. Because I have all these promises from God. And if you believe them, if you'll speak them out loud and apply them, you'll see them happen in your life. You will see the hand of God on you. And you will see yourself come through that fire. And you won't even smell like smoke. Amen. How about that? What a wonderful thing. I mean, it's blessing in my soul here just thinking about this. Amen. I hope it does yours too. I hope somebody's getting a revelation here of what you have in the word, where it is written. If you'll obey it and apply it, how it will protect you and take care of you. Amen. Watch this. This is something he told us in the word. Okay. This is the word. It is written. All right. And this is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. How about that? If you endure, if you hang on, if you stand, you don't give up, you don't quit, you don't walk away, you don't get frightened and run off. You don't surrender to the devil thinking he's more powerful than God. If you stand on the word of God, if you read and tell that devil is written and you put that out there in his face, He's got to be let you go. And the, those, he told him right here, this is Jesus talking, those who endureth to the end shall be saved. You endure and you hang on, you stand and hold in there and believe the promises of God in his word, you'll be saved. Okay? Saved. What, 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 what does that even mean, saved? You know, sometimes as believers, we just read, we take it for granted. We don't even think what that means, okay? What does saved mean? That means we will be in heaven 
and not hell. We will be in an eternal blessing place and not in eternal torment and damnation. We'll be with God for eternity in a wonderful place doing wonderful things and not burning and being tormented in hell. Amen. That's what saved means. Now, a lot of people want to teach that one of the doctrines is once saved, always saved. That's not true. The Bible very clearly tells us that in so many places that salvation is not eternal or secure, eternally secure. You can walk away from being saved, but you don't have to. It's very hard because it is written. If you'll just hold on and stand, you'll endure to the end. You will be saved. We just read that. Amen. So what's the opposite of that? If you don't endure, you won't be saved, will you? So we see right there that scripture tells us that you look at the flip side of that coin. We ministered on that before, the flip side of the coin, right? How about that? Now, I'm going to read you some scriptures here. I want you to see what's coming. Okay, I want you to see and understand and hear what is going to be if you just endure and hold on. If you just hold on, okay? Revelation chapter 7, starting in verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are those who endured to the end. How about that? He said, These are the, oh, I, man, I just, whew. Wow, just thinking about that. To make it there finally one day and be done with all this mess in this life and this world is a wonderful, just a wonderful thought in itself. Keeps me going. Amen. You know what? I don't want, after what my life's been like, I don't want to end up going to a worse place. Amen. I want to go to a better place. All right. And if I'll just endure, if I'll just hang on, if I'll just be faithful to the word of God, God's word will and is faithful to me. Okay. And let's look at verse 15, Revelation 7 and 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God, talking about the saints of God who endured to the end. Okay. Therefore are they therefore are they before, hold on, 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. How about that? Watch this. Verse 16, this is this is what makes it all worth it. Watch this, all those that endured in the end and hung on, this is what you're going to get if you'll just give your life to God and trust in his word and his spirit. If you do what the Bible says, if you're obedient, okay? Verse 16, Revelation 7 and 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat. Watch this, let's go on down. Verse 17. For the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, talking about Jesus, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. This is what you've got to look forward to if you sign on with God and you'll be obedient. OK, what does it say? For the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Watch this. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. No more tears, no more sadness, no more hurt, no more pain, no more bad relationships, no more abuse, okay? No more trauma. That's what he's promised us, right? He promised us this. He said, if we'll endure to the end, this is what he'll do. And while we're here on earth, if we'll believe in him and say it is written and use his word, we will be able to endure. We'll be able, he's given us all the tools and all the power that we need just to stand. And let's go to another place in Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. Amen. We're starting at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is John talking, okay? This is Jesus giving John the revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God 
is with men. Talking about the city, New Jerusalem. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. How about that? Verse four, and God, here we go again, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Watch this. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Verse 5, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. How about that? Let's look at verse 6 here. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, watch this, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh endureth overcometh the same thing he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son that's daughters too ladies but watch this there's a warning there's always this flip side of everything right watch this verse eight but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Of that old list of bad people and bad things, fearful and unbelieving in the first two. How about that? The Bible tells us without, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Fear has torment, the scripture says. What fear does is it keeps you from Saying it is written, it keeps you from walking and standing on the promises of God and his word and claiming them by faith, believing. You have this right here when that devil comes against you, saying of God, and tries to make you think everything's terrible and bad. All you got to say is, I know where I'm going one day. I'm going to stand in a city. I'm going to be there where my father himself is going to reach down and wipe my tears away. Tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into thy rest. This is what we believers, if we will be obedient, if we will just do what he said to do, we'll get and see in the last day. And once that happens, that's eternity. There's never a fear again of being lost. There's never any more torment. The devil can't bother you anymore. Once you get to that place, if you just hang on, if you just endure, if you just overcome, he said. Verse 7 again, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. How about that? You see, it's worth wait. It's worth the wait. It's worth what we got coming is worth waiting for. It's worth going through whatever we have to go through on this earth to see and be there. If we'll just do it. Give up your sin. Give up fornication. You don't have to have multiple partners and do things you shouldn't be doing. So walk away from homosexuality. Turn away from all the garbage of this world. Amen. The Bible gives you a list right there of who's not going to make it. Fearful, unbelieving, abominable, abominations. That's homosexuality. That's anything that's abomination before God. Bestiality. There's all kind of sickness that's out there that people do. Because they're slaves of the devil. Because they don't understand that it's written that they have power over those things. So the devil tells them what to do. He enslaves them with these sins. And they do it. And they live like that. Never taking hold of the things of God and realizing that they have victory in Jesus, in his word. Amen. Witchcraft, sorcery. What is that? That's your horoscopes. That's all that mess, palm reading and all that garbage today. You think it's innocent and fine. It's not. It's witchcraft. And those are the people that will not be in heaven. The Bible tells you right here who's not. Look these words up. Take Revelation 21 and 8. Go to your dictionary. Look all these words up. All liars, it says. Little white lies, lying. Lying's wrong. And it will keep you out of heaven. Okay? And they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's eternal separation from God. That's what the second death is. Okay? Oh, yes, you're going to have to give up some things. You'll have to stop some things. You'll have to stop some pleasures of this flesh on this earth if they're contrary to the word of God. But isn't it worth it? 
that you'll be standing in a city one day. The streets are made of gold, mansions, beautiful, bright, blessed. The temperature always perfect, the scriptures say. Everything's good there. Won't be too hot, won't be too cold. You won't have pain, you won't have sorrow. All that will be wiped away. What, uh, as opposed to what? The lake of fire, which is going to be eternally burning and tormented by flame and fire and pain forever and ever. And it'll never go away. You'll never get used to it. You'll never burn up. Weigh the two out. Which is better? You know what? You, you walk away from a few things. But you know what? And I said it before. I'll say it again. You don't have to give up a single thing to go to heaven that you're not going to have to give up to go to hell. Because those pleasures and sins will not be in hell either. They will not be there anymore. And you'll have enjoyed them on earth. And even after a while, just to where you don't, like being addicted to drugs or so much alcohol all the time, it just gets to the point where it's, it's miserable. Okay, Even, the Bible said the pleasure of sin is only for a season, only lasts so long. Okay, it's very temporary, but your soul goes someplace for eternity, and eternal never ends and never dies. <clears throat> What's it going to be? What do you want to do? Where would you like to be today? Would you like to be when you leave this world in heaven or hell? It's your choice. God's given you everything you needed. He died on that cross over 2,000 years ago, shed his blood. So all you had to do was apply it to your life. Live and walk in his word. Endure to the end, overcome, and be in this place called heaven. This wonderful place where there's no more tears, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more death, no more than any of the things that, that trouble us so much in this life now. God's given his promises to us. And where? In his word. It is written. And that enemy comes against you and tries to offer you other things. No devil, it is written. I'm going to be in a place one day if I serve God and I hold on. That you can't bother me anymore. And I won't be in trouble. And I won't have problems. And I won't be sad. And I won't be depressed. And I won't have all these things trying to come against me. I will hold on. And I will be saved. And I will be in that city one day. You take these exceeding precious promises of the word of God. Obey them. Just It's not hard. Anymore. He's not asking us to do anything hard. He did it all himself. That's how he lived before he died so we could be saved. Okay? That's his promise to us. And we'll hold on. We'll obey. All those things we just read. Those wonderful promises. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All those wonderful promises we can hang on to and walk in. Knowing, because he's already showed us in his word. He didn't, he didn't even make us wonder. He lets us know what's there waiting on us. We see what the prize is at the end of this race. At the end of this run we have in front of us is a wonderful prize. If we'll make it to the end, we'll receive that crown. We'll do these things. We'll be at this place, this wonderful city, New Jerusalem. Be encouraged. I hope and pray. If you need to know more, if you want salvation, if you want to understand, you, you can hit me up. Anybody who watched this video through, you can get a hold of me through the through on Facebook or somebody that you that posted this video. You can comment. You can leave your email, whatever. We can talk. I can show you. I'll share with you. I'll put you with somebody that will share with you and show you the things that you need to know. To be sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be, do, be doing to be in this place, in this city. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate everybody. I hope I hope this ministers to you. I hope it encouraged somebody today. I hope it blessed somebody's soul and make them remember what God told them, what they're going to have. You just keep going. You just hold on. You just endure. You just overcome. Amen. Lord bless.